Hey guys, um, how are you doing today? This is Joseph from Joe Concepts. So today I want to quickly talk about um, depth of field in Cinema 4D without making use of physical render. Okay. So sometimes you might be thinking um, that the depth of field in physical render takes longer time to render. So how can you do that and still render your depth of field and have control over where you want to the follow for your depth of field. So that is what this video is going to be about. So we're going to be making use of um, standard renderer to create our own depth of field. So it took me a long time before I knew that I could actually render a frame or render an image with depth to it without using physical render. So all I knew then was here, making use of physical render, then I'll have to activate the depth of field. But no. I can actually render my depth of field without using physical render. So now this is what I have. So I'm going to be fast with this. These are the things you really need. So this is what I have. I have my camera, which I've created. I have the sky objects and three lights. So this is more like the ambient lights. So if I'm to use ambient light, that means I have to get rid of this global illumination because really that is the purpose for the ambient light to light the whole scene without having using the global illumination. So if I check this now, I should have a okay. So let me just make sure my frame is full. So if I do this, I should have a very fast render, and this is a lot faster than um, using global illumination. But now I have too many um shadows here so for me to uh, make room for that i have to go over to this ambient light so what i actually did was to create i think let me just delete this and do another one so if i render i have this scene as compared to this so you see that they look close the difference is that see this one has this is a lot darker and this one is less darker if you look at this. So what? how can I simulate ambience, more like global illumination with this light? And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to create an omni light. All I just need to do is come here onto this ambience illumination, activate that. So I'm going to have this ambient illumination. So what I can just do is just to give a little bit of tint to it. So if I render this now, I should have more like global illumination few and this is a lot faster so if you feel that this is too much all you need to do is just reduce um this value here so if i bring this to somewhat 80 and do another one that's how you are going to tweak this until you get a feel of that ambient and uh, global illumination so i think this is fine and if you look at the time just six seconds for me to get that so I just feel that as a bonus, but that is not the purpose of this tutorial. So I'm ending this here. So let's look at setting uh, depth of field, making use of standard renderer. So how we are going to do that is to go over to this camera. So I'm going to go out of this camera in a bit, just scroll up. Notice where the camera is here. So the first thing I want to do is, you know, if you are using physical render, you have to set where you want your focus to be. So let's assume I want my focus to be on this um instance object here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag this focus distance till i am on that object all right so i think this is fine yeah all right so that is pretty much everything you need to do when you are using your physical render then you will now come here over to um physical and start changing your f-stop for you to get that effect but if you are using standard renderer, that means you are, making, you are not making use of any setting under physical. This only works for physical renderer. So because I'm going to be making use of my standard renderer, I need to set my focus, and that can be done under your detail. So if you go to your detail, these are the things, DOF, map, front, blur, and that. So DOF means depth of field, map for front blur. So the front, if I activate this, it, have, it activates the one in front, what it means now is blurriness closest to the camera, in front of the camera. So 
which is in front of your focus distance. So your focus distance, this is your focus distance, and this is the front, which is closest to the camera. So if you look at this, we have a value of 1000. So you can change this here. So what this really mean is that, okay, so let me just explain what these values are. So you have your start and you have your end. Your start is counting from your focus distance and the end is distant from your focus distance. So the start is zero. So that means we have zero and going all the way to this value, which is 270 to thereabouts. So let's just make this round value to 70. So what does this mean? This is what it means that it should blow any object from zero. And as it goes, the blur should increase. So that means my blurriness will be taken, the sampling for my blurriness will be taken from this focus object or focus distance. And as the distance increases, the more the blurriness increases, the more. Do you understand what that means? So that is what this means. So that is not enough. We also need to do for the far because we don't only do a foreground blur, we also do a background blur. And that is what this rear does. So if I activate the rear, it activates the rear blurriness effect. So you also know what this means. So if I drag this, this is more like the end. So where I want the blur to end. So let's say somewhere here. So what this also means that from zero, zero means the starting point from this focus distance. So it gradually blows it to this point. All right? All right? I hope you understand that. So that is fine. So let's say up to this guy here. Then this is pretty much everything you need to activate here. So the next thing is just go into your camera and render. So if I render now, let's see what we have. Now, for some reason, let me stop this. For some reason, if you try to render this here in your viewport, you will not see the blur effects. And the reason is because the depth of field for this camera doesn't work with your viewport. It only works in your picture viewer. So that is very important. You need to know that because I try that. You won't see any effect. All right. So let's do here. So if we render here in our picture viewer, you notice this goes up, but we don't see any effects. It's still the same. We don't see any blurriness effects. And the reason why we don't see this is because we need to go to our render setting and add that effect into this. For every time you're going to be making use of standard render, you need to add the effect for you to see the effect in the render. So if I go to effects, you are going to see depth of field. So if I click on depth of field, this is what we have. So let's look at the default setting. So if I click here now, I should now see the effect of that depth of field. So how it works is you don't see it until it finishes rendering before it adds that effect. You can start seeing the effects now. So now the depth of field is now coming up. If you look at the time, it's just six seconds. And I have this depth of field effect. So if I want this effect to be pronounced more, right? If I want it to be pronounced more, then what I need to do is go to the setting and increase the strength. So if I make this trend, maybe 10. So you need to also watch this, all right? So very important, you need to watch the value. By the time you start increasing value and you see that it doesn't look realistic, then you have to bring it kind of like this. I purposely make it 10. See that this doesn't look realistic. It's beginning to make the object big. So you want to use a value that is mm, a lot, not too much. So maybe 6.5 should do for me. So you have this. So you can notice when it's rendered, you don't see, but once it's done, you start seeing the render. So this is for five, this is for 10, and this is for 6.5. So if you feel that, okay, this effect is not much at the background. So what you need to do is to come up, come out and reduce this up to this place, maybe somewhere here, so that this ones become blow even more. So if you do this another render and you have that effect. So let's wait for it. So you can see the difference. Okay. So you could also add some other effects to this. So if you come to this, you have your lens, you have um, your tint. I tried working with this tint, playing around with it. And so you can 
sharpen your lens, you can change the lens intensity. And so what I also played with was to tint this object. So if I want to tint this guy, I can use my tint here. So what this means, tinting this object black. So adding black on top of this, you know what that is, it, it darkens this. So let's say I want to tint this, I want this to be darkened a little bit, but have a tint more like this um, um, color uh, tint to your camera. So maybe I'm going to add this um, pinkish tint, but it's going to be dark pinkish, some, some like dirty pink. Then for the far object, I want it to be light. So maybe I'm going to add a purple object, but a lighter feel of purple. So if I render this now, what I'm going to get is that this part is going to be dark, while as it goes here, it's going to be lighter. So you see the effect. So that is what the tint does. So you can use that to stylize your render and have a very good render. So I, if you feel this was helpful, I think I'm done with this. That's just how to set. You can just check other settings and play around. So if you feel this was helpful, please do give me a thumbs up and like the video, share with your friends. You don't know who might need this. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe because I do tutorials like this every time. So please, once more, I want you to do something and hit me up on my social media and tell me what you've been able to do. I, I, I really appreciate that. So do have a wonderful day and God bless you. Bye.